We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust with Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith. Call 877-PLANNER now. Ooh, yeah. Welcome back to the uh, Boomer's Brain Trust show. Johnny Dean, Dinah Smith and the Brain Trust. As always, we welcome our Biz TV viewers. It's just the gathering of TV and uh, uh, Boomers right here. 877 Planners, our number, PLA double NER, 877 752 6637. Whole bunch of stuff to talk about this hour. We're sort of putting the show into high gear. Professor Plum stops by with the Brain Trust panel to talk about the best financial strategies you'll find and some topics you need to know about uh, before you retire. Now, we're going to start off with the required and minimum distribution discussion that we really didn't quite get to yesterday. Uh, then we got more with the Brain Trust panel. Terry Keyes will be here taking your emails and your phone calls. Questions from us right here in the studio. That's all coming up. Uh, we'll talk technology. Technology later on this hour. Mainly about some of the cool gadgets we'll find in our homes over the next few years. That plus all this technology buying going on. It's almost like 2001 all over again. Uh, that's all just ahead of the program. But first, Dinah Smith starts off our first five stories of the day. Yes, sir. You know, the first of the major employment figures to be released today, it's uh, the ADP non-farm employment Oh, non-farm. Non-farm. Yeah. Uh, and it shows private sector employment rose by 179,000 jobs in May. I think Wall Street was shooting for 210,000. Morons. Yeah, well, this figure, of course, the little brother of Friday's official release. That's where analysts are hoping the U.S. economy will have added about 200,000 private sector jobs in May. So we'll see. Everything's going to shake out come Friday, and then, of course, they'll adjust it for whatever Three or four season. times beyond that. So oh, don't yeah. believe anything that's going to come out on Absolutely. Friday. Absolutely. Hospital charges in the United States have jumped 10% to treat chest pain. And that's interesting, I find. Uh, it's now, the, the, the charge to treat Medicare patients is now $18,000, $18,568. Wow. That's chest pain. That's right. Average charges for most hospitals rose less than 5% from 11 to 12, uh, but uh, chest pain went up 10%. I don't know how they price these things. Interesting. Now, the, other, the, the hospital pricing also varies. In California alone, for example, mm. the price of treating chest pain for somebody in Sacramento uh, is uh, $58,988. Oh, my gosh. Los Angeles is only $11,619. That's according to fiscal. So if you're feeling chest pain and you can make it, from Sacramento down to Los Angeles, well, actually, but but the thing about <laughs> Medicare is, of course, we know that they don't they don't charge these private insurance plans aren't charged nearly as much as you and I would be, right? Uh, if we just wrote a check, the average Medicare payment for chest pain twenty eight hundred bucks according to the data. Oh my word! Okay, so I really dig this next story. Last week, Southwest Airlines finally announced what we've been waiting for: that passengers can now enjoy the benefits of a mobile boarding pass instead of a printed one. Good. Uh, the technology is available in all airports across the U.S. according to Southwest. Uh, and of course, these mobile boarding passes, you know, they show up on your cell phone mm -hmm. and or your smartphone, I should say. And then uh, you just you can get it sent directly to your phone and you can just go right in at the gate and you can download the e-boarding pass or you can just show it. Yeah. To what the took so uh, long? security checkpoint to get it scanned and then hop on your flight. Super easy. Love it. Thank you. Have already downloaded it. So you don't have to go on and go to your computer, find a computer oh, somewhere at the, the hotel, worst. and then, and then the print it out. Work, yeah, and then people ridiculous. are behind you going. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, speaking of technology, guess what got Wi Fi now? The moon. Oh, my God. Thank Now, another thing I've been waiting for. How often have we stood on the moon, right? Right. And held the thing up in the air? We can't get enough bars. Well, now researchers and NASA have managed to beam a Wi Fi signal up to the moon using telescopes and lasers and probably a hard wire. Goodness. That is a long wire. <laughs> the signal is sent from the ground terminal, which we all know at NASA, right, at the facility in White Sands, New Mexico. Uh, they uh, had, had to feed it through four telescopes some 238,900 miles through space where pulses of infrared light were received by LADY. That's NASA's moon orbiting satellite. So wow. now you can get Wi-Fi. I don't know how many people are actually on the moon now. Did we leave any astronauts back then? Well, I just hope they have a cell phone. Well, it's interesting because the moon has wireless internet download speeds that actually rival some of the ones you can get here. It's true. You can get better connectivity on the moon if you happen to be there than you can in certain spots at the uh, corner uh, coffee shop. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Interesting. 622 megabits per second is what they're telling us. That's megabits, folks. Wow. You know how many bits that is? That is a mega. Uh, <laughs> Professor Plum will be here in just a few mega seconds. 877 Planner. Boomer's Brain Trust continues. 